is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is Martha Jones' Theory of Unitary Human Beings. Hey guys, welcome to my nursing theory presentation. I'm actually sick right now, so you can probably hear it in my voice, but I wanted to do voiceover thing of my PowerPoint. I just thought it would be more fun to show you guys pictures and kind of have more of a conversation about this theory because it is kind of difficult to explain. Upon reading it, I was like, what the heck does this mean? And that's why I chose it because it kind of struck my interest. So bear with me as we try to explain Martha Rogers' theory of unity human beings. You guessed it, that beautiful lady you're staring at right now is Miss Martha Rogers. And she was born on May 12, 1914. Fun and corny side note is she shares a birthday with Miss Florence Nightingale. But anyway, Miss Rogers had always loved to read. She grew up at the library where apparently she would read eight books at a time. Even at the age of three, she was reading with her father at the library. She was always interested in things like anthropology, archaeology, astronomy, ethics, psychology, Eastern philosophy, and a whole bunch of stuff. So she was very educated and she was very passionate as she wanted to do something that would hopefully contribute to social welfare. So she went after studying medicine, but in that day and age, as we already know, uh, women, it just wasn't common to have women doctors studying medicine. Also, her parents weren't super fond of her being in medicine. Um, even though she went on to choose nursing, they still weren't happy about it. She ended up at Knoxville General Hospital's nursing program. She did not like it. She thought it was miserable. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely relatable. Um, anyway, so she got her nursing diploma in 1936 and then earned her public health nursing degree. After that, she worked as a public health nurse for two years. She then moved to Connecticut, got a job as an assistant supervisor, and moved up to director of education for the Visiting Nurse Association. She then continued on to become a professor and head of the division of New York University after graduating with her doctorate from Hopkins. Miss Rogers was a very educated lady, very involved in different organizations and associations and different things, always trying to make a difference. So keep that in mind when we talk about her theory because it's going to get kind of far out there. So let's break it down. Miss Rogers' theory of unitary human beings can be described in a nutshell as being part of this process of change that your patient is experiencing. And this change is facilitated by the relationship of your patient and its environment. Your patient can be summed up as energy and vibrations, which is also interacting with the environment's energy and vibrations. They're also described as an open system because energy can go in and energy can go out and the environment's putting energy or taking energy from the patient and there, there's an exchange that's going on. So it sounds kind of crazy, kind of weird to imagine. So I'm just going to say in layman's terms, the environment and the patient are affected by one another. It's really that simple. And we need to use our nursing medical knowledge and also some nursing creativity. That's why they call nursing more of an art form to figure out how to intervene in this process between your patient and the environment. And I just wanted to give an example of what, you know, a positive or a negative environment would look like. It could literally be anything and everything. It can be physical, emotional, um, spiritual, I'm not really sure. But an example would be maybe if there was a couple who was getting divorced and they were in a patient's room just fighting that negative energy could definitely bring down the morale of the patient and they might start questioning, do I even want to live my life? Maybe this situation's too hard, I should give up. And that could affect their healing process. Whereas something positive could be the medication you're giving them or that, that extra bit of um, care and attention that you give them. Maybe you rub their back when you sit them up and that just comforts them. That would be another way that it could be positive. So I think we have a pretty good understanding of this theory, how it kind of works, but in order to understand it a little deeper, I'm just going to share with you guys some vocab that I think you need to know. The first word is homeodynamics, and basically, we all know about homeostasis. It's kind of like the homeostasis between our energy fields and the open environment, and it's 
uh, explained with these three principles of reciprocity, synchrony, and resonancy. So let's dive into reciprocity, that principle. So basically we know this one already that the human and the environment are not separable. They are always interacting with each other. That's that whole principle. So moving on to the next principle of synchrony, it's still talking about this interaction between you know human and the environment, but it's talking about in a, a single point in the space time. So wherever this is occurring, there's always a reaction um, to this interaction. Sounds confusing, but that's basically what it's saying. The third principle is a principle of resonancy, which is describing a symphony of sound. So all these are not really sound, but of vibrations that are oscillating at different frequencies. So we have low and high frequencies of energy and they're coming together to form one giant picture. So not to sound like a broken record, but the last two principles I've kind of already talked about. We have the principle of integrality, which is synchrony and reciprocity like combined, and basically just saying that um, what we already know, that there's these interactions that occur and a response to these interactions. And then the last principle of, I think it's helicy, is describing this open system which we've talked about and this exchange between the human and environment. So we've already learned about it, but that's the principle and the theory. Now, how does this all conclude and come together? In conclusion, what we're looking at as a nurse is this symphony. Better said is the bigger picture. How is everything coming together and interacting with my patient? What's his sleep pattern? You know, what's his habits? What kind of environment is he in? Maybe home life, like that's huge with labor and delivery, right? You know, what kind of support systems are in place? Um, all of these things, diet, and you, like everything, it all comes together and we're looking for these patterns and we're looking for ways that we can use our creative and knowledgeable minds to intervene for our patient. You know, from the minor details of someone arguing in the patient's room, like if that was a hospice patient, would we want arguing in that room no so these are just lots of different examples and it really was kind of eye-opening has more of like a holistic approach something that i think you would see maybe in like reiki or alternative forms of medicine but it's definitely kind of a non-traditional view from my viewpoint but it's something that i think is practiced in healthcare. i think when you are caring compassionate you're already kind of aware of this more uh, spiritual, I'd say, side of human interaction um, with the environment and other people. So yeah, very cool. I enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to replying to you guys' posts, see you on the discussion board, and hopefully this came across as clear as I wanted it to be. So talk to you guys soon.